My name's Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jack Webb is Jeff Regan Investigator as CBS offers you hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Lady with Too Much Hair. It's Suite 308 in the Cosmopolitan Building on 7th near Olive. The letters on the door say... International Detective Bureau, Anthony J. Lyon, President. They used to be in gold, but the Lyons scraped them off one day and made some kind of a deal with Fort Knox. Oh, it isn't much of an office. One room the size of a cigar box, and it smells about the same. There's an overstuffed chair in one corner with a loose spring that's a menace. Right over it, there's a crack in the ceiling. But the Lyon doesn't seem to mind. He says the place is rigged for comfort. Well, that's where I was at 5.25 last Wednesday night. The lion was sitting behind the desk looking at himself in a mirror. What he saw should have scared him. A pair of shoe button eyes mounted in a head like a Spanish onion. You know, Regan, I don't feel like I used to. Neither do the Republicans. I think I've got that middle-aged look. Uh, just the spread. It's getting a little scarce on top. Change your shampoo. I shouldn't be getting bald at my age. I'm only 39. Your addition is kind of bad, isn't it? Uh, I guess it's because I got so much worry. None of this business takes a lot out of a man. Takes more out of your clients. They get good service at reasonable rates. Mm, well, I've heard the commercial. Regan, cancel all arrangements for tonight. You're going to be busy. Doing what? That's the trouble with you, young man. Too hasty. Learn how to relax, like me. Tell that to your ulcer. Ever hear of a lady named Hazel Carr? No. Well, you're going to. She's a businesswoman, and we got business with her. What kind? Later. When? Anthony J. Lyon, international detective. Yeah. 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 1302 Beachwood. Right away, Mrs. Carr. Okay, there's the kickoff, Regan. Who's playing? You and a red-headed guy. Hop over to this address and hide behind a tree or something. I forgot my beard. You'll see a red-headed guy coming out of the house in about 45 minutes. Get a real good look at him. Why? He's the guy you're going to study so you'll know him any time you see him. Where does Hazel Carr fit? She's inside the house. After you spot the guy, go in and see her. Fill in the rest. She'll give you all you got to know. Now get moving and stay on the ball. I work for you. How can I get off? Well, I left the lion sitting there, and I drove out to the Beechwood address. It turned out to be a corner house stuck on the top of a hill, and it figured a good rain would wash it down the drain. Well, I parked across the street and lit a cigarette, watched a kid on a bicycle throwing newspapers. His aim was real good. He got them all on the roof. I watched him finish the block, and that's when my knee action began to suffer. A heavy guy in a trench coat had his foot on my running board. He had a big face, and he turned it sideways and stuck it in the window. What's the matter, buddy? Out of gas? No, my foot fell asleep. Oh. How about a light? Want a light? Got one. Okay. Out of fluid, anyway. Well, pull your head out of here before you lose it. It's all right. I always carry a spare. Come on, beat it, Buster. You spoil my view. Oh. Peeking, huh? Maybe. You say maybe. I say yes. All right. What do you want? Same as you. You're looking. I'm looking. Whose side are you on? Depends. On what? Whose side you're on. See ya. That was when the front door of the car house opened and six feet of pinstripe gray came out on the sidewalk. His 200 pounds was topped off with a bush of red hair and he had a face to match. It had a flushed look, like a high school boy at a burlesque show. He started down the street. The guy in the trench coat crossed over to the other side and moved after him, kind of slow. Then they disappeared around the corner. Now, he was playing his hand, I was playing mine. I climbed out of my car and walked up to the door of the car place. The bell sounded like something that should have been in Buckingham, but the woman who answered wasn't any queen. Yes? My name's Regan, International Detective Bureau. Oh, Lion's Iron. Please come in, Mr. Regan. I'm Hazel Carr. All right. You saw him, I suppose. The redhead? 
Rather large, isn't he? The dons are missing a bet. Sit down, Mr. Regan. May I offer you something? I'll try a story. We'll get to that in a moment. What's wrong with right now? We have other things to discuss. You have a dark suit, I suppose. Yeah, I got it on. Well, get it pressed. You're going out tonight, Mr. Regan. I'm already booked. Then disappointed. You see, from now on, you're working for me. Come on, strike a match, lady. I don't like the dark. You're going to meet the 710 at the Union Station. My daughter Phyllis is coming in. She's been at an Eastern school getting finished. How'd she turn out? Just a vacation. She's dying to see Hollywood. She should have a young man. Well, I'm no escort bureau. I want more than an escort for Phyllis. I want a man with authority. She play that rough? That redhead you saw. He thinks he's in love with her. We all make mistakes. But he's impetuous. Follows her all over. He even threatened her. He says he'll kill her and himself if she doesn't marry him. Well, either way, he loses. I don't care about him. It's Phyllis that worries me. She's so young. Mm Mm-hmm. But I don't want her to know that things are so bad she needs protection. You must remember that. Maybe she'll figure it out herself. Don't let her. Anyway, I've wired her that a young man was going to meet her at the train to show her around. A nice young man. Can you act the part? I'll try. I'll see that you do. Who's that boy out in front in the trench coat? I don't know what you mean. Okay. Anything else? Her major reservations for dinner dancing at the Grove. And I'll show her a good time. You're paying the bills. And keep her occupied until I figure out a way to get rid of that redhead. Murder might work. I'll think about it. Call me after you pick her up. Sure. Now, you you better go. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Regan. Yeah? Here. What's this? Emily Post. Read up on your manners. Well, I figured she wasn't telling everything, but it was her play. I headed for my place to clean up before meeting the train, and it took a little time bucking traffic on Franklin. At Gower, I played tag with the truck driver, trying hard to crease my fenders. It was about 6.15 when I pulled to a stop in front of my apartment. When I opened the door, I smelled cigar smoke. Somebody was over for a slumber party. A short, stocky guy with a stub crammed in his face was sleeping on the bed. He must have been having a real good dream, because he was tough to wake up. Hey, come on, buddy, hey. Come on, the alarm just went off. Oh, hiya, Regan. Guess I dozed off waiting for you. Pajamas in the top drawer. What are you using? Like a scratch. Yeah. Oh, kind of late last night. You should have stayed home today. Had to see you. What for? Oh, you know what? That pretty crummy mattress you got. Well, I'll put in for a beauty rest. Huh. Yeah. Do that, Regan. All right, punk. Let's get to it. Ease off. Ease off, Pilgrim. I'm still shaking a sand out. Well, get up and start talking. Easy, easy. Name's Mo. I'm a friend. Convince me. I'm going to. Hey. Can you get something to drink around? Maybe after the talk. I guess. Who sent you? Your insurance company. I'm paid up. I'm not in the collection department. What else they got? Friendly service, goodwill. Getting close to Christmas. Yeah, I'll send you a card. Don't want no card. Just want the pleasure of knowing I did you a service. Name the kind. Guys going to meet trains have accidents sometimes. Santa Fe's not going to like you. But I figure you will. Giving you how to stay healthy. My doctor tells me vitamins. Mo says it's a wrong dope. Skip the train and take in a show. I don't like popcorn. It'd pay you to learn. You want to tell me why? You got enough. How about that drink, friend? You didn't earn it. Suit yourself, Keeper. But being nice is really a neck with me. I'm pretty nasty. That won't get you an argument. I'd even hit a guy two feet shorter than me. Yeah, I'm turning pale. That's a good color for you, Regan. Stay that way. He chewed on the cigar a couple of times, and then he went out to find a spittoon. Oh, the whole thing had a crummy look like a box of stale crackers. I tried to figure whether he was working for the redhead or grubbing around on his own, but not enough scenes were in to make it a full picture. Well... The car woman was writing the checks, and I was still trying. So I cleaned up, threw on some fresh clothes, and made it to the Union Station a little after seven. The super chief was just coming in. The station master, who walked with a slight list, took her name and said he'd bring her to me. 
And then I fought my way to the restaurant, and the waiter brought me a cup of coffee. He was a skinny little guy with a lot of neck muscles. I guess he got that way from talking so much. Are you going someplace, mister? Just been. Oh. That fun? It wasn't bad. Sugar? No, thanks. Oh. That's no good for you anyway. Gives you diabetes. You know, mister, I gotta go someplace myself sometime. I got a suggestion. I've been working here 12 years, yeah. People come, people go. Pete Brody stays on forever. Cream? No. Uh, it's just as well it's sour. <laughs> you know the farthest place I ever go, mister? That first door to the right. Uh, I, I, are you Mr. Uh, Regan? Yeah. I believe you're waiting for me. You got a name? Phyllis Carr. That'll do. Well, the darling, aren't you going to ask me to sit down? You can handle that yourself. Oh, thank you. Where's your baggage? Uh, we'll have to pick it up. Are you going someplace, lady? I just got in. I've been figuring on going someplace myself. I was just telling your friend here. Get us some uh, coffee. Uh, but I... I've Get been... it. Okay, okay. I'm just being friendly. Yeah, I'm Never... going to adore it here. Town full of mashers. Yeah, you'll get along. I'm much older than I look, you know. Carry a sign. Well, you don't seem very happy with me. I'm dreadfully sorry. You're much better than I expected. Your mother thought different. Oh, she's a dear. I thought at first she might pick me one of those children from UCLA. Well, they'll grow up. But darling, who can wait that long? I want to have fun while I'm young. Look, what kind of school do you go to? All girls. Well, that explains a little. And it's very progressive. Here's your coffee, lady. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I don't mention it, lady. Yeah, like I was telling your friend here before. Uh, where are you going, Mr. Reed? I figured on going... No, not you. Me. Ah. Me. Oh. To phone your mother. Say hello to the dear for me. I'm going to say a lot more. Now, you sit right there till I get back. Oh, whatever you say, darling. I'll be making myself more beautiful. Save that for the redhead. Where'd you hear about him? News gets around. You're more my type. Uh, you better settle for UCLA. You don't want to wind up an old maid. <laughs> wasn't appealing. Nursemaid to a junior miss, trying hard to work up a sweat. The curtain wasn't down, but I was ready to call off the show. I scratched around for a nickel, and I found the phone booth between the newsstand and a broom closet. It was some old gal inside with a waffle for a hat, having a private filibuster. When she finished, I went in and started to dial Hazel Carr. That's when I spotted that redhead in the pinstripe working his way through the crowd. He had an eager look, like an English setter flushing quail. I threw the receiver back on the hook and started for Phyllis. As soon as I stepped out of the booth, the thunder broke. Somebody threw two slugs into the redhead and his light went out. The crowd began to gather, so I went back for Phyllis. It was hard going. I was moving against the grain. Hey, hey, watch out where you're going. What? I heard the shots just come out. Look out. Hey. Hey, you. Some excitement outside, hey, mister? Call homicide. I've been working here 12 years, seen a lot of things. Where'd she go? One day a whack chased the major all no, over the place. Oh, listen, hey. now listen. That blonde sitting over in the corner with a high meter reading, where'd she go? Hey, you're still in the court. Oh, now see what you done. What happened to her? Leave me alone. Give it to me. She went out. When? Well, just after you did. Before or after the shots? I, I don't remember. Well, think. Before, yeah, yeah, before. I, I remember watching the way she walked. She got a date? Uh, she tried, but she said she was going steady with a red-headed guy. Well, things weren't going to get any better at the Union Station. Homicide would be down there scratching around. So I used the back door of the restaurant, picked up my car, and went out to the lion. When he opened the front door, he had a bottle of beer in one hand and a chicken sandwich in the other. He looked unhappy, like a beaver with a loose tooth. Regan, where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Did you try missing persons? Called your place three times, nobody answered. You knew I was working. That's what I called you about. I got something to tell you. Well, wait your turn. What's the matter with you? In trouble again? No, you are, big shot. Another bum client. International detective never had a bum client. Well, those two women just spoiled your record. You've been drinking. You better call homicide and get us off that hook and then turn back Carr's retainer. Regan, what are you saying? You heard me. But it's unethical to return money. When Anthony J. Lyons... Oh, stop it, will you? Word. You quit giving blood when you find out somebody would pay for it. You're out of line. Every time you cut yourself, you make a beeline for the Red Cross to get it back. International detectives under obligation to Mrs. Carr, and we're going to see a truth. All right. You hold her hand in the gas chamber. What does that mean? That's where she's going to be after the police get through. What? What happened? That redhead got himself a free ride to the morgue. It looks like her daughter, Phyllis Carr, called the play. You're out of your mind. Look at this telegram. Uh, let me see. It's from Phyllis Carr in New York. 
She just ran away from school with a Princeton man. You are listening to the story of the lady with too much hair. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, the investigator. Commissions are still available in the Army Nurse Corps. Graduate registered nurses between the ages of 21 and 45 may qualify for service with this fine organization. Nurses may request active or inactive status. Those on active status enjoy the same privileges as regular Army officers. Those on inactive status may continue their civilian nursing duties, but stand ready to serve in time of emergency. If you are interested in joining the Army Nurse Corps and believe you qualify for a commission... Apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to Jeff Regan, investigator, and the story of the lady with too much hair. Well, it all made sense like a girdle on a Siamese twin. Started out with a redhead and a pinstripe and wound up a nursemaid job with a girl named Phyllis. While I'm in a phone booth, somebody throws a couple of sleeping pills at the redheaded guy. The smoke cleared and Red's doing the big sleep in Union Station and my date somewhere else. The lion makes it a Sunday special with a telegram that says everything is off. Well, it didn't take 20-20 vision to see that the girl in the station was a substitute or the telegram was a phony. Well, it was easy to figure my next move. I went across the street and I found a booth way over in the corner. I was two drinks into the house when the skinny guy in the trench coat eased down beside me. Hi, Regan. Think it all helps? You get around. So do you. Still following people? I gave up. You? You got something to say? I'm just here for a friendly drink. Try the bartender. I like conversation. What kind? All kinds. Bourbon and water. I don't look so worried, Regan. I'll pay for my own. You gonna make a night of it? I can't. Got things to do. Gotta find a man who shot a man. What man? The one I followed. The one you watched. Any idea? Yeah. Who? You. Bum joke, Regan. Well, why'd you follow him? My business. Besides, I lost him in a traffic jam. Hey, I'm in. Thanks. Well, here's to the newspapers. Uh, seen this one yet with pictures? All about our friend. Fine murder story. No, I work the crosswords. Oh, give me crime and lots of it. You know why? No, tell me why. It's sin, and sin is here to stay. All right, you said your piece. Hmm. Unknown assailant fires two shots into traveler at Union Station. Listening? It's an old story. Think so? He got his red hair dirty on the floor. Uh Uh-uh. Wrong caper. Well, I'll catch up later. This guy was different. How? Bald, like a boiled egg. Crazy, give me that. See what I mean? guy in the picture ain't got red hair, got no hair. What's your angle, Busby? Like I said, I read papers. Why? I thought maybe you belonged to the barber's union. Well, it turned out to be an even trade. I took his newspaper and he got my ice in the drink. Well, I went back to the office and sat down and tried to figure it out. It was all crazy, like an Eskimo with a popsicle. I started by calling Hazel Carr's house, but the nickel came back. The phone book gave a business address, so I drove out there. It was a pink stucco job out on Olympic right after you pass Redondo. A red neon sign told you that Hazel Carr Incorporated specialized in hair pieces. Nobody answered up front, so I slipped around to the back door. The door opened into a workroom. I scratched a match. Somebody had been looking for something, and it wasn't dandruff. Every wig in the place was torn apart. It was just about then that I heard a step, and then a flashlight jumped out at me, and I smelled a cigar. It was Mo. Hi, Regan. Well, sleeping beauty. I'm awake this time. I'm impressed. Tell me more. Stand still, Regan. This alarm clock goes off. It's already rung. I didn't do it. Body in Union Station? Chamber of Commerce gets upset. I'm from Florida. Figure to bring up the orange crop? Didn't do this, either. Spit out the seeds. Regan, you're not friendly. You got here first. I'm here all the time. No, you're trying too hard, Mo. I work here. It's a serious business. We make billiard balls happy. 
All right, so you work for Hazel Carr. Say something with hormones. You're learning nothing that's not in the trades. Why'd you snatch the redhead's toupee? You make me tired of saying I didn't. Couldn't meet his installments? The count you'll get credit. What's in that toupee? <laughs> Ask enough questions, Regan. Relax, buddy. You'll burn out your coils. You're in the way. They told you once. I was born on the second honeymoon. Where? Happy birthday, Junior. Ooh! I was lying face down in a pile of Santa Claus beards and yak tails. When I rolled over, there was the lion. He was shaking like a polar bear in a French bathing suit. Wake up. We huh? gotta wake up. Ooh. I could hire a detective for the price of you. Get a midget and he'd starve to death. We got a client. She needs you. What are you, Silent Arrow? I'm a nursemaid with you around. She called the office. Gonna have another daughter? I told you it's legitimate. She didn't know nothing about the phony. Where is she now? 1629 Locust Avenue. Why? She's in the middle of a smuggle. You sure? It adds up. She pays the bill. She's straight. How'd you meet her in the first place? I got a right to a private life. Not at your age. Now I left the lion standing here and I climbed in my car. I made a couple of right turns in the wrong zone, but I found the address all right. 1629 turned out to be a two-story Monterey number in the middle of what looked like a golf course. If Hazel Carr owned this place, too. She must have been selling toupees to Crosby's whole stable. I parked the car and I headed for the lights that were on downstairs. I took the front steps two at a time. Oh. Well. Wow. If it isn't UCLA. I just got in from Berkeley. Oh, well, don't be bitter. I'm not. Where you been? Jealous? You're fickle. Just when I'm in college. Lucky student body. I didn't know you noticed. Well, skip it. It was a lousy act anyway. Good enough to fool you. Going somewhere? I got a date. If it's with Mrs. Carr, don't bother. I sent for you. You better try again. Your boss just got a phone call. Well, if I put on one act, I can put on another, can't I? You didn't kill Red. Uh, not important. Yes, it is. Come on back inside. We're going to have a threesome. I like it better at the zebra room. We could find a dark place. That'll come later. Uh-uh. I'm leaving. No, you're not. Inside, what? sis. You don't have to coax me. Where is she? Uh, Mrs. Carr. Look, it wasn't me. She's been dead a long time. So's your alibi. I've only been here for five minutes. You're lying. I'll make you listen to me. Look out. Drop it. You pick up that gun and I'll break you in two. Oh, stop it. Get me a drink. Some over there. All right. Look, I didn't kill him. Not either one of them. Sure. You don't believe anything. Depends on the source. Here, this will slow you down. Thanks. All right, now let's start talking. You got me into it. Mo? Maybe. Say yes. Don't be personal. You get me out of the way so he can plug the redhead and snatch the toupee. No, it was impulsive. That's all. Forget about him. But the toupee was empty, so the two of you have to scratch around some other places for it. Hell, I wrung my fingers through your hair. Let's stick to the subject. I wish you would. Did the redhead know he was carrying an empty load? Nobody did, except Mrs. Carr. It was a smuggle, and she was holding out. It's a mistake for a woman, don't you think? They had a trio, and she wanted to sing solo. The boys weren't smart like you are. Maybe she was worried about her daughter. Maybe she wanted to go straight, and the boys didn't want her to. You're wasting our time. Let me show you where I fit in. No, you're on the wrong floor. There's a way to fix everything. You're an accessory. I can become essential. You'd get lipstick on my expense account. Come here. I'll oh, break it up, baby. You scratched around every place. You still can't find the goods. I think I found it. You figure the old lady used me as a safety deposit box? Where else could it be? All right, supposing I got it, what next? Do I have to draw a diagram? You might as well be realistic about this thing. What's it worth? $50,000 of the white stuff. I don't like to dream. You look like you could use one. I'm extra. Meet the contract there. Oh. Oh, yeah, this act figured to do it. Mo. You got a good memory. Mo, baby, Skip I... Skip it. Stand still, Pilgrim. I, w I was trying to get it from I you. heard the song. That Regan might like to hear the chorus. Oh, oh. Mr. Bedrick, you should grab an offer when it's hot. Hmm. 
Don't be sad, Pilgrim. She smiled at all the boys. Come on, let's get out of here. You'll look better with slow paralysis. <laughs> Oh, I had about as much chance as a clean towel in the boarding house. When the muscle said move, I had to be polite. I guess he figured the car place was too crowded and he wanted new scenery. Well, we went out to the street and he steered me for his car. It was a black job with white sidewalls and there were two suitcases in the back seat. But all his bags weren't packed. He was missing a small package and he had the idea it was over at my place. When we got there, it was about midnight, but it wasn't too late for him to go to work. Now, isn't this better, Regan? Home sweet home. I never liked it anyway. Moo. I got a lease. Those things can be broken. Want me to show you how? No, I'll struggle along. You make things hard on yourself. Now do something the easy way. Get me the stuff. You're wasting your time. I got lots of it, you ain't. Well, I haven't got it. Mo thinks you have. Well, then he's pretty dumb. You... That's on account I don't like your choice of words. Buy me a dictionary. You're going to get yourself two big holes in your middle if you don't lay that stuff in my hand. <laughs> Sorry I had to do that to him, Regan. Well, I forgive you. I just came up to get my newspaper back, and he was acting nasty. The little guy in the bar. My boss doesn't like it when I shoot people. Uncle Sam, huh? Mm-hmm. Narcotics. I tried to tip you off before, but you weren't listening. Somebody should have tipped Mo. Weren't you watching? I just did. Well, it was all over fast, like a short beer in a cheap saloon. They took him away in a basket, and all I had left was a spot on the rug. They had a good thing until Hazel Carr got anxious and decided to pull out. Only she wanted to be clean and have the stuff, too. That's what started the scavenger hunt. The only thing straight in the whole corkscrew was the part about the daughter needing protection. But I guess she got it back at Princeton. The stuff? Oh, it finally turned up. Hazel Carr had found herself a good place to hide it. The Fed spotted it the first thing the next morning when he saw the lion. How could he miss? The lion looked awful in that red toupee. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at the same time next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by Larry Roman and Jackson Gillis. Produced by Sterling Tracy. Included in tonight's cast were Mary Lansing, Ken Christie, Sidney Miller, Lorette Pilbrandt, and Ed Barrier. 29,000 nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. For the first time in history, qualified nurses have the opportunity of receiving commissions in the regular Army Reserve. These nurses will remain on inactive status, ready to serve their country in time of emergency. 4,000 of them, if they wish, may choose active duty. All nurses who receive commissions will benefit from the opportunity for specialized training offered to them by the Army. Inactive reserve status will not interfere with a nurse's civilian life. If you are a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. Original music for this program is by Milton Charles. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.